The devastation in Santa Cruz is awful to see, but it is not a surprise to some of the experts, experts whose advice was not heeded. Channel 7's Tony Russomano is standing by and live now with more on that story. Tony? Pete, if you've ever seen the downtown Santa Cruz Mall, you know how pretty this, this area was. And if you've been watching the news the past two days, you know how devastated the area is now. With destruction like this, you have to ask yourself, didn't anyone see it coming? Uh, how, how could something like this happen without, without any warning? Well, the answer is there was a warning, and there was someone who saw it coming. It was David Steves, the uh, then uh, chief building official for the city of Santa Cruz. And three years ago, he warned the downtown merchants and the city council that the downtown mall was in danger, that 30 to 35 buildings were in danger of collapse and were seismically unsafe. He wanted those buildings either retrofitted or, uh, or condemned. Uh, the, uh, the city council uh, ignored his recommendation and said he misinterpreted the law. This is what's happened, the, de the destruction of the mall two days ago. This all happened, as I said, three years ago, and, uh, and at the time, I, I did a story with, uh, with Dave Steves. Uh, so let's go back and, and look at what the, what the mall looked like a couple of years ago and, and what Mr. Steves said. It was February from 1987. You don't have to look very hard to see the problem on the Santa Cruz Pacific Garden Mall. Now inspectors have confirmed that nearly half of all the commercial buildings downtown are potential death traps in an earthquake. Downtown is built on an old river bottom and we suffer liquefaction and during a quake that is probably the worst location to be uh, to have structures in is on liquefaction because the ground moves like jello. Combine that with uh, turn of the century buildings. Then you have a real problem with these buildings. I would assume if we had a quake similar to Kalinga's quake that we would lose a good part of downtown. Steve's proposed an ordinance to require seismic retrofitting that could cost building owners millions of dollars. Most of the shops along the mall are small businesses that lease space in the older buildings. The shopkeepers are afraid that if they have to close for major renovations or if owners decide to abandon their buildings rather than fix them up, the mall would quickly become a slum. I certainly wouldn't want myself or my employees to be in an environment that wasn't safe for them. But we're all trying to live and do business here, and so somehow you have to have a happy medium, you know, of protecting yourself against the future and also creating a life for yourself right now, which is making money in Santa Cruz. That was February 1987, and this is today, and this is David Steves, uh, now the retired chief building official for the city of Santa Cruz. Dave, what was uh, your first reaction uh, when the earthquake hit? Well, I was aware that the consequences uh, could happen like it has uh, the last Tuesday. After observing uh, Kalinga and the similarity between the buildings in Kalinga and the buildings here on the mall, I knew the citizens of Santa Cruz were in jeopardy with these unsafe buildings. Why didn't the city council listen to you then? Well, the council, uh, as usual, turned things into a political arena rather than looking at the safety of the citizens. Political in what sense? Who were they listening to if they weren't listening to the person uh, they had charged with coming up with seismic uh, safety issues? Well, they listened to the downtown merchants uh, primarily who uh, felt that they didn't want to be, their businesses disrupted. Uh, if we had gone a retrofit program as I proposed it, uh, the uh, businesses could have operated while the retrofit work was being done. But as you see here now, the businesses are totally out of business. Have you run into any city officials in the, in the past two days since the earthquake? And if so, uh, what did you tell them? Uh, I, the only person I've seen is the, uh, the city manager. Just that I just told him, uh, I told you so. What was his response to you? Uh, no response. What kind of response could there be? I guess at this point, uh, downtown Santa Cruz is, is devastated. And the truth of the matter is there was a warning two years ago that was not heeded. Pete? Tony, let me ask you quickly now, just this is to, to try to clarify this, because this is uh, some remarkable information that you had really suggested yesterday. Uh, are we talking about the merchants uh, applying most of the pressure here not to do the retrofit or to delay it? Yeah, the, the Downtown Merchants Association is a very strong political body, uh, a, a very positive force over the past 20 years uh, that, uh, that got this, this mall going and has kept it going over the years. In fact, the head of the Merchants Association at the time is, uh, was the... Uh, uh, the person in, uh, uh, who owned the bookshop Santa Cruz, and that's the building that suffered quite a bit of damage. Uh, the wall of the bookshop Santa Cruz collapsed into the uh, Santa Cruz Roasting Company, causing the destruction there and causing those deaths. I see. Is, uh, is Carol nearby? Yes, she is. All right. Well, why don't we uh, turn this over to Carol then, because she's prepared a package as well on some of the damage and so on. All right. On. Carol, come around behind me here. Carol. Thanks, Tony. 
Pete, it was, I thought what Tony had to say and what Mr. Steves had to say was very interesting. In fact, what I have to talk to you about is related to that. Santa Cruz officials today said that they will rebuild this mall, but with safer buildings. Again, if you heard what Tony and the engineers said, that's, that's the only thing they can do. But the big question remains, and that is just how many of the business people who are here at the mall now can wait for the new construction? The shops and restaurants along Pacific Garden Mall took the worst of it here. Three people known dead. Trees fell, crushing cars. The loss is hard to estimate in dollars. They're talking millions, but there's much more to this. Today, two days after the earthquake, the emotional devastation seems finally to have set in for some of the people who have owned businesses for many years here on the mall in Santa Cruz. That's my baby. It's, it's uh, really hard to explain it. Uh, I'm sorry I can't comment anymore. And that is very, very hard to take it, and especially when I was only able to see it for like a minute in there, so I couldn't stay there any longer. I had to leave. Jose Espinoza had a restaurant. He was among hundreds who crowded Santa Cruz City Hall this morning to listen to words of encouragement from Mayor Marty Wormhout. And what we're getting is good news preliminarily that perhaps more is repairable than we initially thought. So that's very good news right now. But words can do only so much, especially for those who lost businesses and homes. About 15 of us people are staying in the house of a friend and all from the George. We're very fortunate. But most of us don't think we're going to have our home back. Right now, our feelings are run between hope and despair. You know, behind me now, you see Bill Steves, the man Tony Russomano interviewed, and he is discussing the situation here with building officials from other cities in the state of California. Those people have come here to take a look at the situation in Santa Cruz, perhaps to see if it can give them any clues as to how they might make their cities safer in the event of an earthquake. Again, I mentioned in the story that you just saw that the estimate here in damage is hundreds of millions of dollars. The mayor of Santa Cruz said today that it's impossible to tell it could be anywhere from 350 million to 750 million dollars in damage and that's just right here we are not talking about the rest of the county and of course the worst part of what happened right here is three lives were lost you saw live earlier today the discovery of a young woman whose body was found inside the coffee roasting shop so again there's an economic disaster here but of course the loss of lives is is what really is disastrous pete well, Carol, one of the things that, of course, you're doing this story now because, because there's great concern about the mall, but you have emphasized over the course of the last 24 hours that there's so much damage in the neighborhoods as well. Are you in, is that being included in this overall figure here, or are we just looking at the downtown area? She's just talking about the mall area itself because the people, people she was meeting with uh, were the Merchants Association people here as well as some of the other business people. And so again, when you're talking about a range of from $350 million to $750 million, and then on top of that, you're talking about estimates for damage in other parts of the city. It's, it just boggles the mind. Indeed. Carol, for some perspective for people who have spent time in Santa Cruz, is it like San Francisco and other parts of the Bay Area where streets are normal and then you see devastation? Or is there devastation everywhere you go in Santa Cruz? You know, there's not devastation everywhere you go. And some of the people who own homes here pointed that out to me. One man said, look, my house is fine. It's amazing. And the house next door was completely down on its side. So, uh, Anna, you can go for blocks here without seeing any apparent damage. So it is, in a way, like San Francisco in that regard. Carol Ivey, thank you very much. Carol and Tony Russomano from Santa Cruz, where we are seeing, as we suggested here two days ago, of course, the media concentration is going to be in the area of most population, and, of course, where Channel 7 and the other stations were. But as this has gone on, we see much more of what's happened in Watsonville and Santa Cruz. And really